Going into the week, one of the games that seemed like it was going to be an absolute lock was Orlando versus Memphis. Orlando played great football the first two weeks, whereas Memphis, not so much. However, Memphis did end up holding their ground to a degree. But I still thought Orlando played really well, like on this play. They're going to have their right tackle and tight end have one-on-one -on -one matchups on the edge, and then they're going to pull their right guard over to that side of the screen. They can then send their fullback up to block a linebacker, which should give their halfback a straight shot to the end zone. Also worth noting, while it does look like there's two Memphis players, both on the screen, on the top half of the screen, one of them is actually just slow and getting off on this play, so that's not really too important. So Gilbert pitches the ball back, but if you take a look at this point, it's not working out too well. The Apollo's right guard, who's moving over to the top half of the screen, is a little bit slow in getting over there, and he doesn't have the best angle now to block him towards the inside, which would now allow that Memphis player to get to the outside. So look at what the Ernest Johnson does on this play. He reads the situation and knows that if he continues to break to the outside, there will be defenders in that area. So instead what he's going to do is simply just break to the inside. This allows him to get through and get into the end zone. It was really just a smart run by Johnson. So that was a smart play. Let's get into a not smart play. And this one was by Christian Hackenberg. On its surface, it actually wasn't a terrible read. As you see, he's going up against the cover one hole, and these are the routes that the receivers at the top half of the screen will be running. And so since it's a cover one hole, this means that there won't be any safety towards the sidelines, meaning a deep route towards the sideline could end up being a great throw to make. However, it's worth noting that there is also a receiver running an out route in that direction, so you do have to wait until past the out route, otherwise you're basically passing it into double coverage. Hackenberg should have waited an extra second to throw this ball, and honestly, it wasn't a great throw to begin with. However, Keith Frazier does a very good job of taking advantage of Hackenberg not making a great play and going up and intercepting it. While there was technically double coverage on this play, it might not have ended up mattering because of the great play there. This play was another good example of them taking advantage of Hackenberg's questionable decision making. As you see, Orlando is running a cover 3 zone, and these are the routes that Memphis will be running. As you look just on paper, there's not really going to be a ton of routes that are going to end up getting open on this play. And as Hackenberg takes a snap and runs around to try to gain some more time to look for someone who could be open, still nothing really much happens. As you see right now, Hackenberg could try to fit it into a receiver right there in between two zones. However, this would be almost an impossible pass, and I'm not even sure if it is a possible pass. It was a very bad decision that he's going to end up making by throwing it to him. However, take a look at what Terrace Garvin does to take advantage of that. He's right ready for a pass to be made. The second it is, he jumps, intercepts it, and is also running down the sideline. He wasn't just thinking, how can I get an interception on this play? He's thinking, pick six all the way. And while that didn't end up quite happening, he still ends up picking up a lot of yards and even trucks a guy as he gets to the 50-yard line. Again, it should be mentioned, these are both bad plays by Hackenberg. However, sometimes you gotta take advantage of other teams making bad plays. Other teams are gonna make bad plays. It's up to a good defense to take advantage of those bad plays, and Orlando certainly did. So those two plays were good defensive plays. But let's move on to maybe my favorite offensive play, possibly in AAF history up to this point. It was a really fun play design, and just a fun play in general, and here's how it worked. The first thing Orlando's gonna do is have their center and right guard double team an interior lineman. They're also going to have their left guard and left tackle each have one-on-one -on -one matchups on the bottom half of the screen. They're then going to send their center up to block a linebacker and send their right tackle up to block another linebacker. And now you might be thinking, but wait, this leaves an edge rusher completely unblocked. And yes it does, but they have a plan for that as well. It's pretty simple actually. That edge rusher could be doing two things on this play. The one thing he could be doing is just containment, which would be he breaks to the outside. And if he does that, then Orlando would do nothing fancy and just hand the ball off. However, if he breaks straight to the inside to try to stop a run, then Gilbert can just take it himself and run to the outside. This is basically just a simple RPO. This is something very similar you would see Taysom Hill do when he's in the game with the Saints. But the reason I thought this was really interesting is that Gilbert isn't the typical quarterback you have running an RPO type system. But the reality is you don't need Lamar Jackson to make these types of plays work. As you see, Gilbert is looking at that edge rusher and sees that the edge rusher is breaking to the bottom half of the screen. Now Gilbert knows he can simply just take it up and break up to the top half of the screen. This works and allows him to get the first down. However, that's not where to play end. There is another linebacker breaking up to try to get Gilbert. But that linebacker is probably expecting Gilbert to slide right after he gets past the first down. They do have another defender in the area, but he's going to break to the top half of the screen, as of course, you want to basically create a wall to not allow Gilbert to get through, so he's going to just try to make a tackle if Gilbert goes to the top half of the screen, and if Gilbert goes to the bottom half of the screen, then the linebacker would be able to make a tackle. 
He is able to squeeze through them, and if you take a look, this isn't really the best scenario you want in trying to tackle someone if you're a defender. At this point, the defender is already almost on the ground. He really has no choice at this point, but to just try to use his body weight to his advantage to tackle Gilbert at this point. But really, all that ended up doing was slingshotting Gilbert into the end zone for a touchdown. It truly was a crazy play, and it was a pretty fun game as a whole. Orlando moves up to 3-0, and is proving why they're probably the best team in the league up to this point. And as for Memphis, they should be feeling pretty optimistic about this loss. While yes, they're now 0-3, I think it's been proven that without Christian Hackenberg, they could end up being still a pretty solid team. It'll be interesting to see how the rest of the season plays out.